All right, guys. Uh, this is the first part of my what I'm bringing to Lake El Salto here in about two weeks. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple more segments showing the rods and the soft plastics, but this is my uh, terminal tackle, uh, my hard baits, and just kind of some accessories that I'm bringing with me. Uh, I've seen a couple of videos online where uh, they show kind of what they pack. Uh, one of them, uh, Doug Cementel over at BBZ, uh, he, he's a big fish guy and, um, I mean, man, that is all he goes after and I, I respect what he's doing there, but, um, I'm making this video more for the, you know, regular old Joe Blow going down there to try to catch, uh, as many, you know, nice bass as he can. And if one of them happens to be a 10 pounder, then that's awesome. But also just would love to catch, you know. 20 or 30 four to five pounders in a day like I, i'd be happy with that so uh, this is my first time going um and i've had some friends that have been down there multiple times but they uh hadn't really been the most helpful on what to bring they, they've kind of told me but i'm just going to go over what i'm bringing uh, and i'll do a second part of this video saying or a, a separate video altogether saying you know what i wish i would have brought uh, because I, I feel like, you know, once you've been there, you'll kind of at least know the lake a little bit better and just kind of how it fishes. So this is what, uh, I'm, I'm bringing and keep in mind, I'm trying to keep from going to overweight luggage. Um, my buddies, we're all packing our rods and one rod too. So we hope they all make it good, but I'm trying to pack my clothes and my tackle into one check bag. Uh, I, I'll probably end up carrying a small carry-on, but I want the majority of it to be in the check bag. So I have to keep everything under 50 pounds. And uh, that has been the issue. Space wasn't the issue as much as weight. So uh, that's the reason why I've kind of condensed some things. But you, you'll see my boxes are pretty well full of stuff. So um, I guess we'll just get right into it. Uh, first things first, uh, this is the lines that I'm bringing. Uh, we've got Seaguar fluorocarbon 20 pound, P Line CX Premium, Ozuri Hybrid uh, in 20 pound, and then the braid down here in 65. So, I figure if I'm gonna be doing the Carolina rigging, probably go with you know the braid and then Texas rig, top water, and then just all around. I mean, it's hard to beat Ozuri for all around stuff. Uh, so I kind of, I think I have it covered there. They said didn't bring, don't bring anything light. So I, I took their word for it there. Um, moving over to reels. So uh, I, I have all the lines over here on these different reels. And I brought one back up uh, because I realized if my reel right here went down with the 15 pound CX on it, it's like a seven point three to one i believe if it went down uh, i didn't really have a backup for it easily i'd have to unspool something and respool so i'm bringing a, a spare one with some 15 pound on it but uh anyway so these this is just a fluger precedent and like a 7.2 i think it's a, it's one of the sevens uh this is a revo max winch with the 15 pounds for my deep divers this is the uh, quantum monster right here uh, that thing's got a ton of line capacity, so I put that 20-pound Yozuri on it, and uh, it holds a lot of it. Um, it's just a regular Revo, or not a Revo, a uh, Abu Garcia Black Max. Um, as far as cheap reels go, man, it's hard to beat them. Uh, that's the reason why I put braid on it, just in case. I don't know, I hate stripping gears on, you know, r reels with braid, so... Uh, just the old school Revo S, I think that's a Gen 1, and then the Revo SX, uh, that's a higher speed one in 8.3, and I've got it with the 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon for my Texas rigs, you know, where I need to take up a bunch of slack in a hurry. Uh, and then real quick, all these koozies, so I am taking koozies, uh, hopefully I will have some cervezas in one every once and again, but uh, I'm actually using those as real covers, just little quick tip there they're really cheap and they do the job pretty good uh, it's cheaper than buying a whole bunch of those at five dollars a piece if you have those just sitting in your cabinet so moving on from the reels 
uh, let's get into some terminal tackle. Uh, so as you can see here, this is my terminal box. Um, I've just got some spare uh, jig heads for like swim baits, a uh, couple different size barrel swivels here and here, some snaps and some uh, split rings also, and then some rattles in there too. Let's see, bobber stops, beads. Uh, I am bringing some uh, wacky rig and drop shot hooks and uh, like I said, a couple of different kinds of beads. Uh, I heard Carolina rigging is a big deal down there and kind of want to be ready for them. I did bring some, uh, you know, the screw locks uh, for some of my paddle tail swim baits. Uh, now I've got some tungsten weights, just regular old lead, one ounces, some bunch of half ounce weights down here in tungsten and regular. A, uh, these are all 5 alt super line hooks. Heavy duty flipping hooks. I think they're five aught. Not 100% sure, but uh, anyways, I think they're five aught. They're really stiff though, because I've heard you're going to be fishing a lot of heavy covers, so it's going to be a crash course in heavy cover fishing. I uh, brought some of the big EWG monster hooks from Gamagatsu, and then uh, these are just regular wire uh, four and five aughts. So should be covered on terminal tackle and then of course i've got some uh i think those are 3a cents some 316 cents uh lead weights so uh, i've got a couple of extra little spinners just some odds and end things just in case you know i need them all right so kind of with the terminal tackle i've, I've heard from some people that you'll end up having to change out your split rings so that's what these hyper wires are for. Uh, they're, as you can see, 70 and 50 pounds. Just bought a couple of them. Didn't know exactly what size I'd need on the water. And then I've got an extra pack of sinkers in two, four, and six size. Um, I did replace some of mine with the Gamagatsu um, wide gaps. They're, they're supposed to be pretty good, but these are the 2X strong ones. So they should be more than enough you know, to keep from straightening them out. Other things I'm bringing, I got a pack of trailer hooks for my spinner baits, and then uh, this is some KVD line conditioner here. Uh, just, I mean, that's some pretty thick line, and you want it to be as limp as possible. And then I've got two different deals of spike hit. I don't know which one they'll prefer. We'll just play that by ear. Okay, so moving over to my hard tackle. Now, as you can tell, I have put a lot of stuff into a uh, 3700 Plano. I mean a ton. So up here, just a real quick overview. This is my topwater section. Uh, everybody has been down there has always said you have to bring this. And this is a uh, Magnum Yellow Magic uh, in bone is what that is. And they say you don't have to do anything to them. I've got one with a split ring, one knot. Uh, I mean, of course, I could take that off, so I do have a spare. And then under here, you can see I got a whopper plopper, a, a super spook, and then a couple of little frogs. Uh, I did hear there are some mats down there, and that would be fun. All right, so over here, I've just got a random square bill, but these are uh, deep divers, so it's just a Norman DD-22, and then a uh, one of the oversized uh, like this. Uh, deep divers, uh, I think from six cents, and you can kind of see my color pattern. It's a lot of uh, like sexy sad color, and you know, uh, kind of like a fire tiger or an Easter egg going. Uh, and I've got a couple of little John DDs here. Uh, those are supposed to be deadly down there. And then I've got a bunch of square. I say I've got a bunch. I've got of uh, four or five square bills in sexy shad and summer sexy shad and then like a blue back herring down there and uh more of the same this is just square bills and then under here i have the one ounce uh here let me pull one out for you so i've got two of the magnum blues these things are huge they're one ounce rattle traps and they are monsters uh and i've got two of the half ounce 
uh, lose rattle traps. Um, I know these are going to be a pain to get out of here. <laughs> And I hate to say this, but I'm kind of going to Mexico to get spoiled a little bit. And they say the guide picks your baits out for you if you want him to. And he ties them the whole nine yards. So I'm just going to let him, you know, earn his money. Because I promise you, I'm going to tilt good. If you work good for me, I mean, I expect if he if he does everything they said he did last year, he'll be getting 100 bucks a day. So that's quite a bit of money in Mexico. And, uh... So that's the reason why I wasn't too worried about putting all these treble hooks in here on top of each other because uh, I didn't figure I would have to be dealing with it a whole lot. I know that's kind of snobby, but when you're taking one of these big trips like this and you're spending the money, you know, I kind of like the uh, being able to get spoiled every once and again. So uh, this corner is nothing but spinner baits. I've got a uh, Let's see, two white spinner baits and half ounce, two white and chartreuse spinner baits and half ounce. Uh, I've got one and like a green pumpkin that I think is, I want to say three quarter ounce. It's a bigger one. And then I've got two just regular old black ones in there in a half ounce also. Uh, and then I've got, uh, you know, just different jigs. Now this is three to four jigs packed into each box and they're from uh, three eighths of an ounce up to three quarter in each color hopefully i don't lose one i don't know it, it could happen they say they're really the guides are really good about being able to get your stuff back so i guess we'll see there uh and the reason why i didn't spread this out is because like i said i'm trying to cut weight and that extra box believe it or not adds up over time and then uh so this is Kind of like my, I guess, accessory stuff that I'm bringing. A good pair of braid clippers, split ring pliers, uh, my scale. Always got to bring a scale down there. Might catch the fish a lifetime. Let's see, three deals of super glue. Those are so light, I'm just bringing redundance. Uh, got to have good sunscreen. Uh, my friend that's a farmer is going with me, and if he says you got to bring sunscreen, then you got to have sunscreen. Um, they say the no seams are bad down there, so bringing some DEET. Uh, this Mend It stuff, i am only got a certain amount of soft plastics I can bring with me, so I can weld them back together with that Mend It and uh, be good. And now I'm bringing some real oil and some electrical tape. So that's pretty much it for the uh, hard tackle version. I'll cut over to the soft tackle here in just a little bit. Okay, folks, so this is my soft tackle or uh, my soft plastics I'm bringing with me. doesn't look like much, but I have done some compressing on them. So I've been sticking multiple bags into one bag, just trying to save room and save uh, that little bit of weight from the bag. So I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, this is my jig trailers. I've got some just different little crawfish trailers uh, that I'm bringing with me here. The chigger crawls, the... Uh, creature hog and then a uh, crawl fatty junior so uh brush hogs magnum brush hogs and then regular brush hogs watermelon red is supposed to be the color i hope it is uh just so y'all know how many this is this isn't two packs this is four packs i just put two packs in one bag uh they say you go through a ton of plastic so i'm making sure i'm covered there same thing up here with lizards. The guys that went last year said that, man, they ate the lizards up. So I am bringing plenty of them. So this is by itself is three packs of the 8-inch Magnum Lizards in Watermelon Red. That's three packs. Okay. I've got three spare packs that I'm bringing in a backup bag. And then a, uh, a couple of more of the Magnum Lizards by V&M. They're a little bit bigger. And uh, I'm not carrying all these with me out every day. Uh, the stuff that's duplicate, what I'm going to do is just keep those in camp. And if I start needing something, I'll just supply them, resupply them. So this is my Cinco box. Or, well, sorry, there's not a Cinco in it. But, uh, you know, my stick baits. These are the uh, six-inch dingers uh, in a green pumpkin these are five inch the big bite baits 
uh, watermelon reds and they have the o-ring already in them if i want to go wacky style uh, and then these are the yum uh, six inch stingers and this is these are all uh, two packs in one and they tend to hold up better than the Cinco ones they don't have quite the action but I don't think that really matters and this is a uh, watermelon pearl laminate uh, I've read somewhere online I can't remember exactly where where laminate colors tend to do better in Mexico so we're gonna find out hopefully this week um, I've got some just regular trick worms and the like and uh, you know different colors let's see I didn't pack a whole bunch of those now they say depending on the year that these seven inch magnum super flukes in white pearl are the ticket so I have this is three packs by itself this is another two packs and then I have uh, two packs in this white ice color it's just got some glitter in it and I've got a pack of or two packs of the watermelon red ones should be covered on flukes I if we're not covered on flukes then holy cow okay uh, moving on to our swim baits these are just the uh, swimming super flukes right here I've got them in uh, just a couple different colors. I'm really using those as uh, spinnerbait trailers, um, uh, swim jig trailers. I might fish some by themselves. I I'm not sure. The uh, good thing about them, you can fish them, you know, weedless in those trees, not get hung up too bad. And then I've got some in pearl, uh, some swimming dingers, and uh, just some little smaller ones there. And then. Uh, these are, I have, uh, these are four, oh, it's two packs, but there's two packs in each of the uh, 10 inch red shads, uh, power worms, um, and then a one bag of the ribbon tail monster worms from Bass Pro Shop. So those are a 10 inch and they're in a uh, blue flake. So. That's what I've heard that the blue flake is decent. I, I'm not sure. I just have a lot of confidence in that color and the tequila sunrise. Uh, I just couldn't find any of the tequila sunrise ones. So anyways, that's a quick overview on what I'm bringing on uh, my soft plastics. Um, I'll show a video of once I get everything in my bag, uh, just for quick reference. Uh, I, I'll, I'll show you that just so I can show you how compact it is. Okay guys, uh, so this is the rod portion. Um, this is going to be real short and sweet because there's a bunch of stuff that tells you what rods to bring. Uh, mine's no different. So I'm bringing four rods with me, hopefully. Uh, the guy said I can only bring three. If that's the case, I'm just going to knock out one of my heavy action ones and I'll just have uh, three. I'll have, so I'll just go through them uh, on the left. That's a seven foot four uh, Jason Christie flipping stick from Falcon. Um, it's a heavy action, heavy fast action. One next to it, uh, right here. This is a Falcon Cara T7, medium heavy. It's labeled worm, uh, a worm rod, seven foot. Um, it's gonna be a little light for that down there, so that's gonna be my top water, my crankbait rod. Uh, the one next to it, this is a, uh, right here, is a Team Daiwa flipping stick. Seven foot, uh, two inches, I believe. Uh, heavy, fast action. And then the one on the right is the Mojo Bass. Uh, right here, seven foot uh, slopping frog. So I'm bringing it around because it's a little bit stiffer than my other two heavies. Um, it really should be classified as extra heavy if it's not. I don't think it is, uh, but that's my four rods I'm bringing with me. Um, you know, if, if the way I look at it is it, it'd be nice to have four rods so that the guy don't have to retie all the time and I can, you know, just try multiple things real fast. But, uh, worst come to worst, I bring three and, uh, we'll just see what I end up doing there. And if, if one of them breaks, then, 
you know, I can get by with the other things. I, I mean, it's one of those things you can't really plan um, too much. That That's the part of fish in Mexico that just really sucks, guys. You can't just run down to the store and get a new one. So, uh, you just kind of have to be able to adapt and overcome a little bit. Um, I'm not fishing with Anglers in. I am fishing with El Salto Lodge. And uh, they do not supply rods of any kind. They don't have any tackle to use. So I'm having to uh, be, you know, just make sure that I pack enough for myself. And uh, guys, I'm, I'm going to give you all an update after this trip. I'll probably do a second part uh, of this video saying, man, I wish I would have brought this or this or I brought way too much of one thing or the other. Um, so that'll be one video. And then I'm just going to post a fun video of, hey, this is what we call it. Hopefully that'll be a long enough video to actually have a video. It might just be two pictures. Who knows? But uh, anyways, guys, if you made it through this, I appreciate it. Um, I'm just doing this as a service, you know, for, for guys, this is a trip in a lifetime or... You know, it's a lot of money to go down there, and I, I just want to make sure that, you know, you're able to bring what you what you need to bring. And uh, anyways, uh, if you made it through it, I know it was kind of tedious, and I can jabber on a little bit. But uh, anyways, I'll give you all an update, hopefully three weeks or so. Appreciate it.